Hi and welcome to a video about doing the chi-square test. I live in Madagascar and I take my students into the rainforest um, and this is one of the things that we do in fact. So chi-square test for us and I hope it applies to something that you're doing out there as well. Uh, we wanted to look at if two different species of, of hardwood trees that we find in the rainforest, symphonia and palisander trees right here, symphonia, palisander trees um, are associated we, we observed a little bit that we saw them together pretty often. Is it statistically significant how often we find them together? That's the question we're asking. The null hypothesis, we have to have a null hypothesis with a chi-square test. The null hypothesis says that no, they're not associated. And the alternative, alternative hypothesis is yes, they are associated. That's why we're asking this question. So chi-square test looks like this. Um, the, it looks a bit intimidating, but actually it's not. If you can observe and count, you're good to go. We can all do that. So let's get into this. Now here's the forest we're heading to, and uh, my students are gonna lay a bunch of quadrats out. I have four groups laying four large quadrats, five meter quadrats, because we're working with trees. So we're gonna have 16 quadrats out there. Quadrats, just a big square that we lay out. So we're gonna randomly sample this area and eventually end up with these 16 quadrats that you see here. Now, all I have to do is my O, oh, the observation in the chi-squared test, count the light green is synthonia. So synthonia and synthonia, that's the only thing here. So I see synthonia, present, palisander, absent, tick. I mark one there. I go to the next square over here, my next quadrat, and I see a synthonia tree and I see a palisander tree, the dark green in this case. So present, present. So I would mark one here, present, present. And I would continue through, here's absent, absent. And that's what that stands for. So now I would go through every quadrat, present or absent, depending on the species, I would fill them out. And this is what I got. You can double check my, my pictures and my work here and I would total them up across the rows and total them down across the columns. That should come to 16, the number of quadrats I've laid. Looks good. So next up, what we're going to do is we're gonna take this data, this is our raw data that we collected in the field, and we're going to plug it into a spreadsheet. And there's a little bit of math involved and moving numbers around in calculations, um, but it really is all just adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. We can do all those things, but let's follow this uh, order of how we do it. I'll take you there right now, let's go. Okay, here we are in our spreadsheet. Magically, it's organized itself. Um, you don't need to make a nice looking spreadsheet with all the borders and colors and things. I did that just to help uh, maybe make it a little easier for you to follow along. So here I have my observed table. This is what I'm starting with. Uh, I have O here, that's great, it's taken care of, numbers are there. I need my E now before I can do any of this math. How do we get the E? Well, that's the uh, row total times the column total divided by the grand total. That's why I've highlighted all this in yellow. So here we go, we have, um, I'm gonna set up my equal sign and open bracket, and we're gonna go to the row total on this top row, and we're gonna multiply it by the column total, this first column, close the bracket and divide it by my grand total. And I have this number, that's my first expected value. So now let's do it for the rest of them. So E equals, you might wanna fast forward. Okay, so at this point I have my O and I have my E. Now I need to, so here we go, I'm gonna take my um, brackets and I'm gonna take my O value, my observed value, subtract it by my expected value in the same cell over here. Close the brackets. Shift six gives you that up arrow, which means it's an exponent, so squared in this case, and divide by my expected value again. So now I've written this out the same way, and paste. Nice thing here is I can just drag it down because I'm doing the exact same thing uh, based on these guys here. And I can also take this little corner here and drag it over again, and it will do the math for me in each cell. Oops, I already had that showing you. I didn't want it to show you just yet what the answers were. 
So I'm very close now. I need to now find the sum. This is each one of these is one set of information. Now I need to sum them, add them all together. So to do that, that's pretty easy. Equals sum, open a bracket and get all those together. Voila. All right, so now we have a value here, 3.88. We are so close to done. We just need to figure out this thing, degrees of freedom. Why do we need to figure out this? Because it tells you which place to go, which row to go to in this very classic critical values table, which is uh, often published in a book or put on the website for anyone talking about chi-squared. You have to compare your value to this table to get an answer. So which row are we going to look at? Let's see. If I'm comparing two values here, and also same over here, I'm comparing two values. The easiest way I can explain it, it's a little bit of a shortcut, I know, is you take your two values and subtract one. Two minus one is one. I go to the first row. So my degree of freedom is one. Um, when would you have more than that? Well, like why are there so many numbers here? You can compare a lot of things. A dice, for example, with six sides. If I want to roll a dice and see if it's about even all those numbers, or maybe it's a loaded dice, someone's cheating in Vegas or something, and I want to keep rolling it and do a chi-squared test, um, then I would have six comparisons here. And what's six minus one? Five. So I'd go to my fifth row, and I would compare my value against that. That's just a side tangent note. For us, mostly in biology and ecology, we're, we're working around the first degree of freedom because we're just comparing one thing against another. So here we are. We have this value. We have one degree of freedom. This row here, 3.88, happens to be slightly larger. So this means, yay, I reject my null hypothesis. My null hypothesis was that no, there's no statistical significance between palisanders and sethonia trees side by side. I've just rejected that. My data shows and statistically significantly shows that yeah, they are actually connected. We do see them very often together and so much so that we call it statistical significance. I just wanted to point out one last thing. You can cut out now, if, cut free if, you, if that's all you need, but there's a little bit more uh, right down here. It's called the p-value. Sometimes you're asked to get your p-value and simply compare it to these values, the critical values here. I've highlighted the 0.05. That's what we use in biology. Um, it kind of represents 5%. Or in other words, 95% of the time, you need to be really sure before you say it's statistically significant. So how do we compare against the p-value? This is just kind of taking it one step above and beyond. You're going to see the answer is almost the same as if you just work with this number. But let's go there just for fun. So here is a the formula. We start writing chi squared. Chi and luckily it pops up for me because I couldn't remember it on the top of my head. Here it is um, for this particular study that we're doing. So I click on that one and it asks me to tell me the chi-squared value I have and my degrees of freedom. So my chi-squared value is here, comma, my degrees of freedom is here, and I can close that bracket and hit enter. My value is 0.049. Well, that is also just below 0.05, so I just barely reject uh, my null hypothesis. There is, uh, it's the double negative again, always gets me. So it seems like there is a statistical significance between the two trees being found together in the forest. I really hope that helped and I didn't confuse anybody more than you are already confused by some of these things. Um, but if you play pause through this, I hope it helps you with your labs out there and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.